Hey everyone, in this video we're going to look at object detection in ML.NET in a hot new framework, WinForms. Okay, so WinForms was hot probably around 15 years ago, but I have gotten a few requests to do a video with it. Speaking of which, if you have a request of your own of something you want to see, feel free to put it in a comment or message me on Twitter. Alright, so I'm in Visual Studio 2019 here, I'm going to create a new project. And I'm just going to be a Windows Form app using the regular .NET framework. So it's not .NET Core here. And I'll give it a name of MLNet WinForms. If you're not as old as I am and you don't remember, and you're not familiar with WinForms, you have this designer page where you can actually drag and drop all these components on here. So we have a button, you just drag and drop it on there. And if we run it, then that's what you get. It's kind of one of those WYSIWYG editors is what you see is what you get. First thing, let's add some NuGet packages. Microsoft.ml. So we get the base ML.NET package, version 1.5.2. And because we are dealing with object detection, we need image analytics to deal with images. And because the object detection model we're going to be using is from the Microsoft Custom Vision as an Onyx model. So we will need the Onyx Transformer package. And so real quick, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to build this again. We get a build error. And that's because ML.NET supports only 64-bit builds. So what we can do is go to our properties of our project, to the build tab here, and select x64. And that unchecks is preferred 32-bit as well. Now we can run this. And it runs like it did before. All right, so I'm actually going to drag a button over like we did before. And with these components here, we can look at these different properties. And we have the text here. I'm going to say select image and resize it. And also it has a name to it that where we can reference this and the code behind. And with these kinds of components from the UI, I like to kind of prefix the names of them to what type they are. So since this is a button, I prefix BTN and select image and this is going to allow us to select an image on our machine to use and so we need a couple of other components here first is the file system watcher i'll just drag this on it doesn't show up on our designer but it comes down here i'll also change the name here as file watcher and then we do another one called open file dialog which i will rename that to file dialog and then I say the file name is file name. So the open file dialog is going to tell it to open that little window that shows all of our drives and all and where we can select an image. And the file watcher just watches for different changes in that if we have different files. Alright so we want to know what happens when we click on this image. So we can double click this and that creates kind of the, the default event for that component. In this case, it is a click event. And when we click this, we want the file dialog to show. So we just call file dialog that show dialog. And this gives us a dialog result. And so we can actually put an if statement. So if the show dialog returns a dialog result of OK, then proceed. All right, and before we continue, let's add a few things to our solution. Let's add a couple of folders. First, we'll add one for the ML model. And we'll add another one for our models or different classes that we're going to be using. And for our model, I'll just copy these over. Uh, this is from Custom Vision that we used in a few other videos. And I'll link those in the description if you want to see those. So I'll paste these in. And then I'll make sure that these are copied over. And first is the onyx model from the custom vision and then the labels text file which gives us our different labels that we're using and the model is going to be for object detection and it's going to detect not only if the photo has a red or white wine in it, in it but also where in the photo that it is and it's built out some of that ml.net code so in our constructor here for our our form and this gets executed whenever our form appears and since it's the main form it's going to always get executed so we need to create our ml context so new ml context 
and we need to give it some empty data because we're not training on it, we're just using this for predictions. And so we need to give it a new list and the data we're gonna give it is a one input class. And let's go ahead and create that in our models folder. One input. And this is gonna be the kind of the input schema that we expect to get. And I'll paste this in here. And we expect to have a image but instead of a file name of the image, it's going to be an actual bitmap of the image. You notice I have these image settings here. So I'll create another model. Call it image settings. And that's just going to hold those two constants there. So public const integer image height. It's going to be 416. And it's also going to be the same for the image width. So we have that. We go back to our code behind here. We have our inputs. Next, we need to do our pipeline. So context transforms. We need to resize the images. And this comes from that image analytics package that we installed. So this takes in a few parameters. First is the resizing. We want to use the image resizing estimator, resizing kind, and we will fill the output column name is going to be data how we get that again if uh, you haven't seen that original custom vision video is we have a an application called netron and so if i put this file in here this onyx file we see the first node here is called data so that, that is our input node and if we go all the way down our output node is called model outputs zero. So we'll be using that as our output column. So the next thing is the image width, which is going to be the image settings width, and then the image height, which would be the image settings image height. And it's a little bit bigger. Make sure y'all can see it. And then the last parameter here is the input call name and that's going to be the image from the one input we can either put the string image or we can use the name of operator and put in one input dot image and then we'll append to that another context that transform where we extract the pixels of our image and here's where we use that output column name of data we're still going to be using that as the input to our onyx model and speaking of which, we'll append another transform called apply onyx model. We we'll give it the model file. And that's going to be an ML model model.onyx. We'll give it the output column name, which we saw was the model outputs zero. And then the input column name is going to be data. And there's our pipeline there. And with that, we'll use the pipeline.fit method on our empty data. And since we have our, oh, it's empty data, not just data. And since we have our model, we can create a prediction engine. In our prediction engine, we actually wanna use down here when we get a file from our file dialog. So I'm gonna come up here and create a private variable. I have a global variable to hold that prediction engine. And so type prediction, engine as a one input then we need to create a one predictions model as well but i'm going to call this prediction engine and let's create that prediction class here one predictions and paste in this property here we give it the column name the output is that once again that model outputs zero column name we can change it up in our property name i just give it a name of one type oh and i forgot we do need to on our empty data we need to do context that data load from innumerable from that empty data into an odd data view and then we can use this data into the fit method and now we can call prediction engine or set prediction engine to context that model create prediction engine one input one predictions then pass in the model so now we have our model here or our prediction engine and down here we can use it 
prediction engine that predicts in here. Then we need to figure out what we need to put into our predict method here. We can do new one input, pass in the image equals the file name. However, remember this image is a bitmap type and the file name is a string, so we need to create a bitmap from the file name. And we can do that using image static class from a file, then pass the file dialog file name into that. But the from file returns an image class, we can actually explicitly cast that into a bitmap. And that's because if we go to the bitmap here, it inherits from image, so that, that allows us to do that conversion. And then we just set our image to that image. All right, and we need to store this prediction into a variable. But this prediction has the one predictions and it has the one type property, but it's a float array. And we need some way to kind of parse out this float array into a way that we can figure out what label it gets predicted on. So I'm actually gonna pause real quick and add some other code. And when we come back, I'll explain that a bit. All right, and we're back and we've added quite a bit of helper methods here. And what these do is kind of help us determine how to fill in this bounding box class. And the bounding box basically includes the X value and the Y value where the bounding box starts and the height of the bounding box and the width of the bounding box. And this basically kind of gets a right rectangle class from it, determines the, the box color, its description that gets written into the box, and a couple of ways to get what color that the bounding box is gonna use. And these helper methods, and I'll be honest here, like I was in my other video, not not exactly sure everything that goes on here because it's using some sigmoid and softmax and all that, and some other calculations to determine all this stuff. And so once again, big thanks to Microsoft and one of their samples for supplying all this. So we have our prediction, and next let's actually get our our labels. And remember, we have our labels file in our ML model folder. So we can use file dot read all lines, and that is in the ML model folder labels dot txt. And we need to bring in this namespace. And next, we actually get our bounding boxes. Now we can have more than one in our photo. We we'll use that parse output kind of helper method, and we give it a prediction of the one type float array, and then the string of our labels. And this does return a list of bounding boxes since we can have more than one. Give the original width of our image and the height as well. Now we'll do a check if our bounding boxes has more than one, we get the max confidence from it using bounding boxes, the max length method, and we get the confidence, get the max confidence in that list of bounding boxes. And from that, we can get the top bounding box from that max confidence. So bounding boxes that first or default, and we just find out where the confidence equals that max confidence. And once we have our top bounding boxes, let's clear them and then just have that one bounding box to it. So right now we're just only getting the, the top bounding box from that list. And so for each bounding box here and bounding boxes, we do quite, quite a few things. I'll just copy these in for now. So we do a few calculations here where to put the bounding box on, on the image. And we use the graphics that are from image and we draw the bounding box rectangle and then they draw the string with that, of that description. So we have the bounding box information. We need to do next is to put that information on our form here. What we can do is use the picture box component and I'll just put this kind of overlay on top of it here. Give it a name, pick prediction. Then back in our code behind, after our for each loop here, call pick prediction that image, pass in the image, and then pick prediction that size mode to auto size, so we can get the full image in there. And then pick prediction that 
I set to visible true and for that kind of in our constructor here I'm going to set that to false initially all right so let's run this and make sure this works correctly and we notice we get an, an exception here it says unable to load the onyx runtime dll if we get that we would come back to our nuget package manager and here microsoft the ml onyx and here we will just install the microsoft the ml onyx runtime so that's installed let's start this again all right so all that ran where it loaded the model and all that so I'll select an image and i'll just select uh, one of these red images there we go so we have our bounty box it says it's red and 78 percent confidence that it's red and pretty good prediction on the bounty box as well and we can do a couple of things to kind of make it a bit nicer uh, we can add let's make this a little bit bigger we can add another button i'll just put this to the top I'll call this select another and give the name btn select another and then in my code behind I will set that select another button visible equals false and then once we have a prediction I do select another visible equals true what happens when we click this make the bigger there we go when we click this we'll make the visible of this button false and then we give our prediction photo as false but our select image visible equals true there we go so let's try that so select an image we'll do that same one there we have to select another now the position is kind of weird but uh, we can worry about that later so select another and let's try a white one here so we still got our select button here, but we have our white one here. It was what it's like 81% confidence that it's white and a nice bounding box there as well. And we can fix this by going up here and saying our select image visible is false. So we just test that real quick. There we go. So they hit it hides that all select button. And there it goes again. So I hope you enjoyed how to use ML.net uh, object detection with WinForms. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.